So I'm here at EGX with uh, Mike Bithell, who is creator of Thomas Was Alone. Uh, we're just going to talk to him about how he got into the industry um, and how sort of you guys as sort of young, uh, young ambitious kinds of people want to get into the gaming industry. So, uh, sort of, can you give us a bit of background as to what you do now, um, and then kind of go from there? Yeah, so I'm an independent game developer. I made uh, Thomas Was Alone, which was a kind of pretentious platformer. Uh, I'm now making Volume, which is a stealth game. Um, they come out on everything. You can Google them. They're, 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 they're doing okay, which is nice. Um, and yeah, so I, I basically live off my games and make whatever the hell I want, which is nice. Um, yeah, it's cool. Pretty good. So where did you sort of start within the gaming industry? Was it kind of like, a, oh, you did a degree and then you sort of fell into it? Or is it kind of you knew somebody who kind of said, oh, yeah, we, we really want you, your talent in this specific sort of area? Uh, so for me, I did the university thing, which is one way of doing it. You don't have to do it that way, but that's how I got in. So I went to, uh, yeah, I went to a, a Newport Uni and I, did, I actually did a computer game design degree. Uh, obviously, my entire family thought I was skiving. Um, I was faking, faking going to university, but I did and I got the degree um, and I was lucky I kind of got a job straight out of that. Worked at a company called Blitz Games who were up in Leamington Spa, they're not, they're no longer uh, in existence but they were there then. Uh, worked on like third person shooters, uh, Nickelodeon tie-in games, uh, kung fu side scrollers, like everything. Um, and then a mate of mine moved to London to start his own studio called Bossa. Uh, they're probably best known for Surgeon Simulator now. Yeah. So I kind of went and worked for them as lead designer there for a couple of years. Uh, I quit actually just before Surgeon Simulator, so I had nothing to do with that game. Um, <laughs> although it's bloody cool. Um, and then, yeah, in my spare time, I was making this little hobby game. Uh, Thomas was alone, and it kind of came out and did a lot better than we expected. So how does that compare to something like when you develop a game like Volume, for instance, compared to Thomas Was Alone? Well, it's a lot bigger. I mean, that's the big shift is, um, is Thomas Was Alone was kind of me and a composer and an actor. Volume is about 20 of us, so coders, artists, big cast, um, uh, sound designers, everything. Like just a massive, massive team. Um, that's the big shift is just kind of working with a big team to create something much more substantial. Um, it's you're still doing the same thing. You're still trying to make a fun video game, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a different scale of work. So I mean, I know there was um, uh, during the, there was a Minecraft documentary with Notch, and he um, he did loads of stuff. And obviously, when they expanded into this, they had like five people to start with, and then moved to like a team of like fifty odd people. I think now it's just ridiculously huge. I mean, do you see that as being a detriment because it means you have all these people you could then manage on top of? everything else or is it a great thing because it means you've got more people to go and get your coffee for instance or go and do everything else it i mean it depends right it depends on whether that's what you want um some people really want to like you know run a massive mega company um some people just want to potter around and make cool shit i'm i'm in the second camp i'm not really a, a kind of a big business guy um i just have you know a big group of mates making something cool together and and as long as we can keep that feeling i'm happy um who knows though, who knows, I might change. I'm, as I age, maybe I'll become slightly more kind of evil corporate, I'm not sure. So um, I heard that you're dealing with something to do with BAFTA in terms of young gamers and young game designers. Yeah. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so uh, so BAFTA have this initiative, uh, it's called uh, BAFTA Young Game Designers, and it's it's cool, it's, uh, it's basically uh, BAFTA trying to do what they can to support kind of the next generation of me's. The, the, the people kind of still in school, I think they run from, I think it's 10 to 17, might be 11 to 17, not sure. Um, and it's basically, if you're a kid in the UK and you want to make video games, this is this is it. This is the thing you want to jump in on. Um, and it's a bunch of stuff. There's a website with lots of resources on, uh, on, on how games are made and what the processes are. Lots of interviews with game designers about how they go into the industry, this kind of stuff. So, you know, talking about, about how things are, there's more than one way to do it. I did it one way. There's plenty of other people with other ideas, uh, and they've all worked. Um, and also, there's some competition elements to it. So if you've got a really cool game design idea and you want to kind of see if that weighs up against other kids, you can put it in and, and do your own thing. It's a really, it's the kind of thing I wish had existed when I was in school. I think I really enjoyed taking part. Do you think? I mean, like in terms of the gaming industry, is it something that's just like? it's kind of impossible to get involved unless you create your own developer, like indie developer kind of thing, or is it one of those things that really, it's kind of, it's crying out for people and it still needs more people to sort of get involved? I mean, that's it. Like, it's, I think it's a lot like the film industry. I think people look at it and because of what we make is like so cool and so like 
pervasive. People kind of don't understand how that thing gets made. It's like so there's like a magic to it. Like you just like oh my god, you know, it's how do films even get made? It's I I think it's true though. I think I think kids look at this stuff and they don't they don't know that that's like that's someone's job. That that person like goes there and they get the salary and then they go to Sainsbury's and buy their dinner. Like it's not yeah. it's not some magical you know uh, fictional job. Um, and there are massive loads of jobs in it. Um, and we need more people doing it. We need we need more kit. We need a whole generation of kids to want to make video games so that they can come up and make cool new stuff. And we need all kinds of kids. We need boys, girls, everyone from every different background, because that's how we get really cool, interesting, awesome, weird, fantastic games. Which is what we all want. We just want more video games. And anything we can do to do that is awesome. That's pretty quite cool. And so things like um, like the Raspberry Pi, for instance, some of the, some, some great work there just in terms of just general computer science stuff. Sure. But with things like that, I mean, do you see that as a really good positive thing for the gaming industry? Because obviously you've got um, things like Scratch and stuff that allows, you know, really young kids, when I mean, we're talking like five years old, they can create, you know, a proper game from scratch. Um, we're using Scratch, pardon the pun. Um, you know, do you, do you see some stuff like that being like, really, like a real positive thing? I guess it kind of is, really. Yeah, I mean, the more, the more kids who are messing around with computers, being a bit nerdy, playing with this stuff, um, the better. And, and really what, what the BAFTA thing is all about is just supporting that and just kind of encouraging it and letting kids know that it's an awesome thing to do with your time. Um, making stuff with computers is cool and fun. Um, and I spent all of, I spent so much time as a 12 year old like just fiddling with computers fiddling with making little little games little like they were rubbish they were little s silly stuff um, but I got a real kick out of it and it's it's kind of set me up for life to have this awesome interesting career that I have now um, so yeah if you're a nerd out there if you're a kid who's into this stuff keep being into this stuff and you know maybe check this stuff out and see if uh, see if BAFTA can help you with it and that's really quite it's quite a good thing to be because I think say I mean you look at gate where game the gaming industry's kind of changed I think where you had like say these big studios and you still have these big studios but more often times you get these indie games say things like Surgeon Simulator which was kind of just a thing that just kind of existed because of some I think it was some event or something wasn't it and just kind of just just created in a day and it was just like this thing and it's existed and people really love it and things like again like Eurotrack Simulator from these guys that are really really tiny but again one of the most popular games you could possibly find in the same with Minecraft and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a very exciting time to be making computer games, um, and I'm one of the people benefiting from that. Uh, what we need to do is we need to make sure that this is still happening in 10 years. We need to make sure that the people who are 12 now, you know, by the time they're 22, 25, that kind of age, they're the ones that we're talking about excitedly. And the way to do that is to encourage them and support them in getting involved in this stuff now and playing with this stuff because that's how we ensure that Britain remains as as involved in this as it is currently at the moment so many cool indie games and so much so many cool triple a games are made in this country you know games like the lego games in general uh, batman the whole batman arkham series gta these are big massive games that are made in the uk and we need to make sure that those games are being made by the next generation um, we should be proud of it as a country and we should celebrate uh, how much cool stuff is made here so in terms of education, then, because I know there's obviously there's a new curriculum for computer science now for, um, well, for even primary school kids if they really want to get involved with that, and a lot of the secondary schools are reaching out to their primary schools um, to, to you know get more people and more young people involved with, with computer programming and things like that. I mean, do you see that the the new curriculum is that something positive, or do you think it's just sort of a bit of a PR stunt from the politicians and stuff just to kind of get people to vote for them? No, I think it's really important. I think it's super positive. I remember I was in that. There was, a, there was a period where computer science was really cool and well taught years and years and years ago. And that led to people, I, I worked for a couple of them, the Oliver Twins who were bedroom coders who made millions making really cool weird games at the age of 15 because they were going home from their computer science classes and making this stuff in their spare time. Um, I, but when I went to school, I don't know about you, probably you're probably a similar age to me, you went to school and we learned how to use Word and Excel, right? Yeah, like that's. Pretty much. And that all that teaches you how to do is write letters and use other people's software. Really. How to be a secretary. Yeah. You're not going to be the person who makes Excel. You're not going to be the person who's pioneering awesome new things and new uses of this technology. So yeah, any movement that gets kids 
programming or even just thinking about how computers work at a more baseline level so they're aware of what works and how things how things can be kind of produced because that's what's going to create the kids and, and train up the kids and get the kids excited about this whole new economy that's coming of where we're all going to be having to make cool stuff. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting because I mean you look at like the American market which pretty much dominates everything um, and you look at sort of, I mean, like us, we've, I mean, we've, we've invented everything, haven't we? Let's be honest. We've invented time. We've invented... <laughs> we invent, well, 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 <laughs> we, take, <laughs> we take full credit for time? Well, well maybe. Well, Greenwich Mean Time. Let's just say, say that. That's true. Um, and, you know, with things like, um, like the Raspberry Pi and, oh, and obviously the internet. We invented the internet and with Tim Berners-Lee yes. and, and co. invented the internet. You know, that kind of stuff is, is sort of been, it's been removed from us. I think a lot of the times, I think we've sort of taken a step back from like the 90s came along and we sort of said, oh no, we want people to be really productive in an office. That's all we want. We don't want people to make stuff because that's no good. Who wants to do that anymore? And I think that kind of stuff, I mean, say, when you talk about rock star games and stuff, some of the stuff they make is really cool and it's really high level. It's AAA stuff. Not the indie devs are nobodies, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's good that there, there's some AAA guys there that are making the big bucks, yep. bringing, them, bringing the money back into the UK, which is what we want, and, uh, you know, and making the economy better. The point is we need a bit of everything. It's diversity. You need little, cool, weird, creative indie games, and you need massive AAA Goliath games. And we need to celebrate both ends of that spectrum and everything in between. Um, it's all good, right? We all we want this country making and leading culture. And we do. Uh, we just need to do things like this to make sure it continues. And it's the kids watching this who are going to be in charge of that. We're all going to be old and irrelevant at this point. Uh, it's true. No one will care about what we have to say about this. It's going to be the kids watching this who get to decide how awesome the UK kind of games industry is in the future. Well, thanks very much to, to Mike. Obviously, he's got his new game, Volume, coming out. Um, just Google Mike Blithel Games, you'll probably find everything. It's a rare name. It's a rare name, yeah. You yeah. pretty much won't be able to find anything else like that. So thanks very much. No worries. All right. Cheers.